Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. This is Miko. Hey, hey, hey. So if you're like me and you love the highlighted sculpted look, but you don't like that cakey powdery look under your eye, then this video is for you because I found a way to bake without the cake. See what I did there? I see you. But before we get into the tutorial, if you're wondering, this is not my bra strap. This is actually the tank that I'm wearing underneath my Faja because your girl had 360 lipo. I'm going to be snatched. So this is my tank here and I'm wearing this to protect my skin from the Faja. And this is the Faja. This is my compression garment. And I'm also wearing my ad board to keep my stomach flat. And I have to wear this for about three months. I'm blogging my entire lipo experience. It is like no other, but it is well worth it. And I'm so glad I did it. So make sure you subscribe to my channel so you don't miss that video. All right, so let's jump into this makeup look. Now my face is already freshly washed. I didn't put anything on it except for my skincare products. I didn't put on my moisturizer yet because I'm gonna use the, the La Roche-Posay Toner Mist. And this is to reduce excess shine and visible pores. And you're supposed to use it under your moisturizer. I first found out about this from Young Africana. Hopefully it works for me. I have super oily skin and I'm just looking for any product that works. So it says apply on clean skin before applying a moisturizer. Leave to absorb for a few minutes and gently pat off any excess. All right, so that takes a minute to absorb into the skin. So give yourself some time. Or maybe I just sprayed too much. For moisturizer, I'm using the Murad Oil and Pore Control Mattifier with SPF 45. I used to use this same product years ago, but I used the formula that didn't have the SPF and they discontinued it. But this formula still has the oil control and mattifying properties. So I'm going to give it a try. And I'm gonna put some on my eyelids because they get oily too. And this product has a slight smell to it that wasn't in the other formula. So it has to be from the SPF. It's nothing too strong or overpowering, but there's definitely a scent to this. Now, another oil control technique I found out years ago when I first started doing my makeup is to apply a setting powder under your foundation. So I'm using the Sasha Compact Translucent Setting Powder and I'm just going to press it into my pores. This is a technique drag queens use and if there's one thing I know about drag queens is their makeup always lays. And I like to do my eyes before my foundation so I don't have to worry about any fallout once I set my foundation in place. So I'm going to start with my brows. And my brows are microbladed, so all I really need to do is fill in any sparse areas and make them nice and crisp. So I'm going to use the Milani Weekend Brow Pen and Espresso. And I love using this pen because it gives you hair-like strokes and it makes your brows look so snatched. Next, next, I'm going to highlight underneath my brow and line my eyelids. And so I'm using two LA Pro Girl Concealers, Warm Honey for under my brow and Chestnut for my lid. I'm using the Real Techniques Smudge Brush to highlight under my brows. I'm using a really flat shadow brush to conceal my eyelid because I'm wearing Lashify lashes and I love my Lashify lashes, but it is really hard to, it's tricky not getting product on the lashes. And I'm going to immediately set that concealer so it doesn't crease. And I'm gonna use the Laura Mercier Translucent Setting Powder in Honey. And I'm just putting some in the lid, swirling my brush and tapping off the excess. And this sets the concealer so your eyeshadow doesn't crease. And I'm gonna go ahead and color correct under my eyes. Got a lot of hyperpigmentation down here. And I'm using the LA Pro Girl in Chestnut. And I'm just gonna blend that with my damp beauty blender. 
always like to keep wet ones nearby when I'm doing my makeup so I can keep my hands clean. I'm gonna use two primers to prime my face, the Maybelline Master Prime Face Studio Blur and Smooth Primer and the e.l.f. Power Grip. And I just wanna pat this on in my T-zone area to try to reduce my pores. You can't really reduce the size of your pores, but what these products do is they blur your pores and fill them in so they aren't as visible. And I'm gonna go in with the e.l.f. Power Grip. I really love this primer. And this is a cult fave. Everyone, all the girls are using this primer. And I see why. Because it just gives you this grip that feels like it's going to hold on to your foundation for life. Okay. So I'm going to tap this out because I don't want it to absorb into my skin. I want it to sit right on top so it can do its job and if you've never used this before it gives you this grip you can you can hear it like a suction <laughs> and it's drugstore brand so it's super affordable for my foundation i'm using my holy grail estee lauder double wear and 6w2 nutmeg this foundation truly is my holy grail i've been using it for 10 plus years and i love it because it's Full coverage, it's mattifying, it lasts all day, and it just dries to a really nice finish. And I am going to put a little bit of this underneath my eyes on top of that concealer, yes. And that is part of the technique for baking without the cake. Because this foundation is going to dry down to a really nice matte finish. And it has a different formula than the concealer. So it's going to set under your eyes a lot smoother than the concealer alone will. I'm going to set my face using the Benefits Professional Setting Spray so I can get that skin-like finish. I'm going to contour with the Fenty Contour Stick in Espresso. It's a nice, deep chocolate brown. It's one of my favorites. I've been using this one for a while now, too. Because I hate the bronzers that end up looking reddish orange on your face. I want it to be chocolate. I want to be a chocolate brown goddess. So I'm going to go ahead and highlight before I blend that in. And I'm using the MAC Studio Fix 24 Hour Concealer. It does not say the shade on the package, but it's kind of like a butterscotch. That's what it looks like to me. and I am not concealing under my eyes. We already did that step. So I'm gonna let that sit just for a hot second because this will dry on you really fast and it makes it hard to blend. I'm just gonna blend my contour using this really dense, flat contour brush. And I like this brush because it does a great job of blending while still allowing you to be strategic in where you're moving the product to. Blend it into my hairline. So there's a nice transition. Boom, boom, boom. All right, so now let's go ahead and try to blend out this, con this concealer because I don't want it to dry on me. So I'm just gonna start by blending the edges. I don't wanna move the actual product too much. Just wanna blend out the edges. And I'm using the Real Techniques setting brush to blend this out. And with whatever is left over on the brush, I'm going to highlight under my contour. Sometimes I don't like to apply contour in this area because it's so hard to blend out and it ends up looking so harsh. I'm gonna go over that contour 
with the Juvia's Place Cream Bronzer in Espresso. This shade is super deep compared to the amber. Sometimes I use both, sometimes I'll use one or the other, but today I want a really, really deep. But today I want a really deep look, so I'm gonna go ahead and use the Espresso. I'm gonna use this Real Techniques Sculpting Brush I've had it so long, the name of the brush rubbed off. It's semi-fluffy and it's rounded. So I'm just gonna dab, lightly dab this in the product. This is super pigmented, so I don't want to apply too much. And you can always start light and then apply a little more if you want to. Boom, that's giving me a nice contour right there. To set my contour, I'm going to use the Beauty Bakery Snackaroni Bronzer. It's this beautiful, rich, deep, dark shade. And just tap this right over that cream bronzer and the contour. And I'm also going to sweep a little bit of this on my eyelids. It looks so beautiful and natural, just a neutral look. And this is the Real Techniques Deluxe Crease Brush. I love it for applying this bronzer on my lids because it's super flat and dense. And it's the perfect brush for this because it puts the bronzer right where you want it and you don't have to worry about blending it. It just blends. It places the product and blends all at the same time. And so to set my concealer and my under eye area, I'm using the Morphe Bake and Set Brightening Pink Setting Powder because everyone was just going crazy on YouTube about this setting powder. I'm like, what is the fascination? So I had to pick this up and try it, but I'm gonna use this to set under my eye. But guys, I love this pink setting powder. It's like it just melts into the skin. It doesn't leave a flashback. It's just perfect for dark skin. And so I did a little bit of research because I wanted to know the science behind the pink. And what it does, it counteracts dark circles and brightens the skin. So that's the secret. So I'm gonna let that bake for a couple minutes. So I'm just kind of going back over my bronzer. Boom, boom, boom. And I'm gonna put on my blush. So for blush, I'm using the Juvia's Place Blushed Rouge Palette. This is volume one. It's not my absolute fave because I feel like, so it has this dark berry and this coral color. The berry I feel like is a little too red and I love the coral. So what I normally do is just dab my brush in both of them using more of the coral. And then that way it's just not so much red. And I'm gonna go ahead and brush off my bake. I normally let the powder bake a little bit longer, but I'm pressed for time and boom, so there you have it. I'm using the Real Techniques Angled Face Brush to brush this off. All right, so we're almost done, but what I always like to do is highlight my inner tear duct. So I'm gonna use the Juvia's Place Warrior Palette. If you've never seen it before, it has all these beautiful browns and golds. It really is a gorgeous palette. And I'm gonna use these two shades right here, and I might pop in one of these gold highlights to give it some pop. And I'm using one of my Morphe brushes to do this. I don't, I don't even know the name of it. I've had these brushes for so long. It's like, <laughs> I really need to replace them. So all I ended up using is this shade here. I didn't have to use any of the other shades. I'm using the Estee Lauder Waterproof Gel Eye Pencil in Onyx to line my lower lash line. And because my lower lashes are fine and basically non-existent, 
I'm going to use the Beauty Bakery bronzer to apply a little bit of color to my lower lash line. And I'm using the Real Techniques smudge brush. And with the Lashify lashes, I don't have to line my upper lid line or use mascara. So to set my face, I'm going to use the Black Opal Oil Absorbing Press Powder and Smoking Topaz. I'm lining my lips with the MAC Lip Pencil in Chestnut. Back in the day, I always wondered if you should line that white line around your lips. And now all the girls are doing it because they want that full pouty look. So go figure. And for gloss, I'm using the Juvia's Place Lip Gloss in Oasis. And I'm going to set my face with the Charlotte Tillsbury Airbrush Setting Spray. So this is the finished look and I love how it turned out. I've been using this technique for a while now and I still have that highlighted look under my eye without the cakey powdery look, right? It doesn't give you as much of a highlight as if you were to put concealer on top of the foundation, but you still have a highlighted look and my foundation doesn't look flat. So I love this for an everyday look. I think it's more natural and it works for me. So leave me some comments and let me know if you use the same technique of applying your concealer underneath your foundation. All right, guys, thank you so much for hanging out with me today. I hope you enjoyed the video. I will see you in the next one. Until then, stay beautiful and stay blessed.